Hey guys, welcome back. The video today I was originally going to be including as a part of the video coming out next week, which is about Lazy 8s. However, the length was so long and this particular exercise I feel is so important that I thought it deserved its own video. So today I'm introducing you to an exercise I call Shapes in the Sky. This is a coordination exercise that can be used with pilots of all levels and is something I work on with my commercial students prior to introducing Shandells and Lazy 8s. Let's jump in the cockpit and get going. This is an exercise I call Shapes in the Sky, or SITS, S-I-T-S, Shapes in the Sky. So first, the most there's, there's a few different levels of SITS, uh, and they get progressively more difficult. And it, it's a great exercise for any pilot of any skill level. It's gonna make you really get a good understanding of the airplane and how all of your three control surfaces work together. So let me just show you the very first uh, rendition of this. And this is the one that I use with my primary students to teach them about rudder and how rudder uh, input needs aileron input to balance it. Basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be pretending we have a pencil sticking out of our nose cone. And we are going to pretend we are drawing a horizontal line right along the horizon, parallel with the horizon. So we're gonna maintain level flight. We're gonna be at an airspeed below maneuvering speed. So I'll be about 80 to 90 here, 85 or so, or at 5,500 feet. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the rudder to control my nose and move it left and right while I use the aileron to keep my wings level. That's all I'm doing. So here I am, I'm wings level. 5,500, I'm not too worried about altitude or airspeed right now. I obviously want to make sure I don't get above maneuvering speed, and I also want to just make sure I'm not diving or climbing too much, but I'm not worried about anything too too uh, specific. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to go to the left with the rudder and a little right aileron to keep the wings level. Then to the right, right rudder, left aileron to keep those wings level. Watch what happens if I don't use any aileron and I just use rudder. The plane is gonna bank in the direction that we are pushing the rudder. If I go to the left, it's gonna bank to the left. And if I go to the right, it's gonna bank to the right. So we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna use only enough aileron to keep the wings level as we do this. Here we go, just staying at my altitude. So here we go back and forth, nice and smooth. Left rudder, right aileron. Right rudder, left aileron. Nice and smooth. Great exercise for primary students to get a feel for the relationship between aileron and rudder. All right. So that's what that looks like. All right, now we're going to take it to the next step. And this is where I kind of start with my commercial students. We are going to draw a square. Just now, we were just doing a line back and forth. Now we're gonna add some elevator component into it and draw a square. So we're gonna start in the bottom left corner of the square. We're gonna go up, we're gonna go right, and then down, and then back to the left. All right, here we go. Again, not worried about altitude or airspeed. Here's what it looks like. Up, not too far, right, and keeping the wings level down and back to the left there we go and now we can even go the other direction we can start going uh let's go we'll start to the left and then up so we'll go left up right and down and you can see it just draws a little square in the sky but requires coordination of all three control surfaces to accomplish. Our wings are staying level the whole time. That's the key. All right, now we're gonna take it a step further. I'm gonna go ahead and turn around here. Let's review what we did real quick. We did a line, which just utilizes the aileron and rudder. Then we incorporated the elevator with the square, but we kept the elevator and rudder and aileron separate. In other words, we used the rudder and aileron coordinated as we went left and right, but the elevator movements were isolated. They were up and down without having to change what we were doing 
with the rudder and the aileron. Now we're going to take it the next step. We're going to do a triangle. This is going to involve coordination and changes with the aileron rudder and elevator all at the same time. So we're going to start, if we're looking at a triangle, we're going to start in the middle of the bottom. So we're going to move slightly to the left, then up to the right to the top corner, then down to the right to the bottom right corner, and then back to center. All right. So here we are. Traffic looks good. All right, doing a triangle. Starting in the middle on the bottom bar. Going over to the left bottom corner. Left bottom corner right here. Now, up and to the right to the top corner. Now down and to the right. There, and now back to center. There we go. All right, we'll try it the other direction. We'll go to the right first. All right, let's get my airspeed back up. Here we go, to the right corner, right bottom corner. Now, up to the left, up there. Now down to the left, over here, and back to center. All right. Lots of things happening at once there, guys, and you got to coordinate all three controls. We are putting significant control inputs on, especially the rudder, so that's why we want to make sure we're below maneuvering speed when we do this. All right, expert level. Here we go, taking it a notch up. The most difficult rendition, a circle. This requires not only coordination of all three control surfaces, but smooth, consistent, constant coordination of all three surfaces. So we're just gonna start at the bottom of the circle and go to the left, and then we'll go to the right. All right? All right, checking for traffic. Everything's looking good. Okay, here we go. Circle. Starting at the bottom of the circle. So, left, up, over, right, down, and back to the center. There we go. And now to the right. Going to the right, up as we come around to the left left more down and back to the center Woo! that's a good workout so guys that's how i start introducing just the commercial move maneuvers in general to my commercial students like chandelles and lazy eights because it is such a so important to keep coordination and understand how the uh, controls relate to each other while you're doing those maneuvers and how the amount of control input changes throughout those maneuvers. So practicing these shapes in the sky give you a really good feel of how these uh, control surfaces work together and how much you can really push them to get uh, different results. Well, that will do it for today, folks. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming videos, including the full video on Lazy 8s next week. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and until next time, resume your own navigation.